I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Kingston in Dorset. It's about two miles to the south of Corfe Castle where we'll be going shortly and about five miles west of Swanage on the Isle of Purbeck. And we're going to be doing a roughly five and a half mile circular walk from Kingston to the historic Corfe Castle in the north and back. And as well as loads of interesting things to explore, we will be enjoying some quite spectacular views of the Purbeck landscape. Well, I'm filming on a, a glorious spring morning right at the end of April. The sun is out. There's hardly a cloud in the sky. It should be perfect conditions for walking, so do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a free car park, which is at the sort of western end of the village, and headed into the centre next to the church, which is just behind me here. Well, before I tell you about the church that's behind me here, I need to tell you a little bit about the history of churches in the village because back in the 12th century, there was actually a chapel of ease to the east of the village. And the main church uh, was at Corfe Castle. And in 1833, John Scott, the first Earl of Eldon, who owned the estate, uh, replaced the chapel with a new church on the same site and called it St. James. It then became disused and then became a church hall after the new church, the one that's behind me here, was built. The old church became a residential property in the 1970s. We'll be having a look at that shortly. But what about this church behind me? Isn't that quite magnificent in the morning sunshine? It's the new St James Church that was built in 1874 and completed in 1880 by the third Earl of Eldon. And it does look like a, a mini cathedral. It's a, a sort of gothic cruciform building with a nave, north and south transept, uh, apse, a central tower and something called a, a narfex, <laughs> a sort of enclosed porch crossing the entire width of the church at its entrance and there's a lovely rose window above. I think it's got something like ten bells and the pink colouring of the stone is caused by algae that flourishes on the shady side of the building. So why were there two churches in the village at one stage? And why did the third Earl have this new church built? Well, legend has it that uh, the Earl was found in bed with the vicar's wife <laughs> and that uh, somewhat strained their relationship. And that may well be why he had this church built. Effectively, it was a private chapel of the Eldon family for about 40 years and it was consecrated in 1921 when the church was conveyed to the church commissioners of the Church of England. Well, although Kingston existed in Saxon times, uh, Kingston means King's Village, uh, it effectively is an estate village that uh, was uh, virtually completely rebuilt between the 1770s and the 1790s. Let's have a little wander through. OK, we'll start our little wander through the, the village. So the church is behind those uh, trees there. And then just on my right here, the old post office. Of course, so many of the buildings here have that distinctive uh, sort of Purbeck stone look to them, which is where they're built from. And there's a lovely pump. <laughs> Ignore the loose chipping sign and the, uh, <laughs> the bins. I'm guessing it must be bin day today. These gorgeous cottages gleaming in the morning sunshine. Beautiful. And this is the Scott Arms pub. Dates from 1787. Originally called the New Inn and then it became the Eldon Arms in the 
early 19th century. It became the Scott Arms after the Second World War uh, because at the time the Earls of Eldon had moved elsewhere and the uh, Encombe Estate to the south was uh, owned by the Scott family. And I love the old milk churn by the front door. That might be our final destination. <laughs> well, we're uh, continuing to head eastwards on this beautiful day. Our first glimpse in the distance of Corf Castle. And that's where we'll be going. Okay, well, we've made our way to the eastern end of the village and uh, you can see the old church just behind me. And we're now going to start our sort of walk into the countryside as I gradually pan round. What a beautiful view looking to the north Corf Castle, where we're heading next, of course, and even beyond the gap through to Pool Harbour. So I'm just going to keep Logan on the lead for a little bit because we're in a field of sheep at the moment. Well, just to show that it's springtime, look at those two sweeties. Aren't they lovely? <laughs> well, I'll just stop for a little pit stop to admire the view, looking to the north. And there's a Corf Castle, obviously, uh, on a mound in between two ridges. Absolutely stunning countryside. In fact, just in front of me, I, I, I thought I'd see a bit more of it, but I think we're only going to see the roof. It's uh, Skoll's Farm, which is the oldest house in the area. Um, I'll see if I can put a picture up of it. Um, it's 13th century walls were used in, a, in the present 17th century house. It was built in 1635, reputed to be haunted, apparently. <laughs> well, just a, a little update on the route. We're just about to join the... Uh, Purbeck Way, which is a 28 mile long distance path from Wareham to Corf Castle, and then it goes along to Ballard Down, although there is a, a detour to Chapman's Pool. Well, sorry folks, <laughs> another stop for some views. But again, looking north here, you can see the ridges with um, sort of dwellings on the lower slopes that have been there since Saxon times, very much built on the spring line, because Basically, when rain falls on chalk, it soaks down into the rock until it meets a layer of clay uh, and then finds its way to the surface as a, a spring. Of course, during the 16th and 17th century, uh, sheep were very much valued for their wool and meat. And sheep belonging to tenant farmers were taken up the chalk ridges during the day and then brought back down to manure the fields at night, which obviously made the soil fertile for crops. And the flocks were moved to different fields each night, so uh, each field could be covered in turn. Well, a, a spring walk wouldn't be a spring walk without bluebells. <laughs> Aren't those beautiful? And the sun just catching them, uh, it's sort of protected from the wind in this little dell there. Lovely. There's some lovely old farm machinery. I wonder how old those are, or indeed what they were used for. Well, 
well, it's a rather pleasing signpost. So one and three quarter miles back to Kingston, only a mile to Corfe Castle, but more importantly, there's the, a sign of a beer mug. Well, we've just crossed the B3069 and have just entered Corfe Common, which is one of Dorset's largest commons, I believe, at 140 hectares. I believe it's an SSSI. But as we go along here, we're going to keep our eyes peeled. There's a lot of ridges and earthworks related to um, Iron Age and uh, also medieval field systems. And there's quite a few Bronze Age barrows about as well. So lots to see. We're now coming into uh, Corfe Castle village itself and some really great views of the, the castle already. Um, it gets its name from um, well, Old English kerf, uh, cutting or pass. And these sort of fields here between sort of um, uh, East Street and West Street uh, are known as the halves. Well folks, here we are at Corfe Castle. You can just see the castle in the far distance, but we'll, we'll be looking at that shortly. We'll start off with the, the church, which is the uh, church of St. Uh, Edward, King and Martyr, originally built uh, in the 12th and 13th century. And the whole building, apart from the tower, was renovated in 1860. The early church consisted of a nave, chancel, narrow north aisle and large northern porch. I think it's got six bells. And there's been a clock on the tower for 400 years, and the present one dates from 1864. Now, it's named after Edward the Martyr, who was uh, King of the English between 975 and 978. Uh, he was uh, murdered by his stepmother, Elfrida, uh, not far from here, just uh, up, in fact, where Corfe Castle is now. Um, and the story is that when King Edgar the Peaceful died in 975, he had two sons that, that we know of, um, Edward the Martyr by an earlier marriage and Ethelred by Queen Elfrida. Now, Elfrida, who was the first crowned queen of England, wanted her own son to be uh, king rather than her stepson, uh, Edward. So uh, she uh, invited him here in 978 on a hunting uh, trip she was living here at the time, uh, gave him some wine, which he drank, and then got one of her servants to stab him to death. And uh, in the Civil War, the, the Roundheads was, um, stabled their horses here and uh, caused a lot of damage. In fact, uh, the masonry was used for target practice, and you can see a few shot marks, uh, both inside and outside. Okay, well, we'll have a, a peep inside. Now, uh, it is very dark in here, so we'll see how we get on. A very impressive uh, font over to the, uh, to the west there. I think the thing about this church is that there are some tremendous stained glass windows. And uh, on a sunny day, you're really getting a great effect. Beautiful ones here. So I'll just... Uh, Head down towards the uh, altar. Got another splendid wooden ceiling. And there's the organ on the right. But, wow, look at this stained glass window. And I believe that this was in memory of uh, uh, Lady Charlotte Banks. And there'll be more about the Banks family later on. Beautiful. Well, uh, just opposite the church is the Fox Inn, uh, reputed to be the oldest uh, pub in Corfe Castle, although the Banks Arms might be older. It was built in the 18th century, but it was originally an alehouse that dated back to 1568. And uh, just opposite the Fox Inn is the Town Hall, which uh, apparently is the smallest town hall in England and it passed to the town in trust in 1888. At the time, it was over 200 years old. 
The ground floor was built from stone from the castle after it was destroyed, more of the castle later. The single storey thatched building that was originally here was destroyed by a fire in 1680 and the present uh, two-storey structure dates from the early 18th century. The floor area of the council chamber apparently is only 350 square feet and there's now a museum on the ground floor. Well, it's a popular tourist place, that's for sure. This is the market square, very much the heart of the village, and there's a cross and a, a pump. And in 1215, King John granted a weekly market and a twice yearly fair here. And a couple of pubs to have a look at. That's the Greyhound Inn, which was originally two houses in the 17th century, altered in the 18th century. And I see there's a date on the porch of 1733. And then just turning to the right, that's the Banks Arms, originally a, possibly a building here in the 16th century, and that might even date to 1549. Well, we've come all this way. Let's go and have a look at the castle. Well, we're just crossing the, uh, the, the drawbridge. Uh, it's going to be quite busy in here today. I paid me £10 for my uh, entry ticket. Oh, goodness me, Logan, what have we got here? The Corf Castle Dragon needs a name. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Right, well, just uh, looking up here. Wow, doesn't that look magnificent? Our friend Arthur Mee, of course, wrote all those King's England books. The one in Dorset that he published in 1939, he stated, and I quote, Is there anything like it in England? If so, we have not seen it. It is unique and beautiful. Well, let me tell you a little bit of history about the castle, and I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. Obviously, if you want to know full details, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there, I'm sure. So the castle that's here today was actually built by William I for his son, Henry I. So it dates the 11th century, early 12th century, and it's built on a steep hill in a gap created by a couple of streams eroding the rock either side. You've got the, the Wiccan stream on one side and Bile Brook on the other side, and they merge into the Corf River, which then flows into Poole Harbour to the north. Now, there was a, a Saxon building here before, possibly a wooden building, possibly a hunting lodge. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, Edward the Martyr was murdered here by his evil stepmother, Elfrida. Um, the actual murder took place roughly where the southwest gatehouse is today. But the thing about this castle is that it is actually one of the, the first castles to be built of stone uh, after the uh, Norman Conquest. Because most were built of earth and timber at, uh, at that time. The keep was built in the early 12th century and the southwest gatehouse, which allows access from the outer bailey to the west bailey, dates from the mid 13th century. Now in 1139, King Stephen laid siege to the castle, attempting unsuccessfully to defeat one of his rebel barons, Baldwin de Redvers. Stephen built a siege castle about 400 yards to the southwest. You can just about see the banks and ditches that remain today, and the area is called the Rings. King John used the castle as his treasury and uh, as a prison where he once starved as between 15 and 24 French knights to death. But it remained a royal fortress until 1572 when Queen Elizabeth sold it and uh, it became a grand family home to Sir Christopher Hatton, her Lord Chancellor. And during the English Civil War, it was a royalist castle held by the Banks family. It was captured by the parliamentarians after a couple of sieges in 1645. Lady Mary Banks was living here at the time. And the stronghold gave way to a second attack by treachery, an officer of the garrison, a traitor, opened the gates to the roundheads disguised as royalists and the castle was then deliberately destroyed, giving its present appearance. It was never rebuilt. And it was bequeathed to the National Trust uh, by the Banks family in 1982. It still gets something like 260,000 visitors today a year.
where we're continuing to make our way up, up and up into the castle. And the higher we get, the greater the views we get. So this is just looking to the north behind me here. And uh, oh, spectacular. Of course, uh, just in front of me down there, that's the, uh, the Swanwich uh, Heritage Railway, uh, steam railway. Hopefully Logan and I are going to be on that uh, later on in the year. We're going to do a walk from Corfe to Swanwich and then take the train back. But uh, just panning round. Of course, on a day like today, it's perfect for, for viewing. Beautiful. <laughs> and high up on that ridge somewhere, is our car. <laughs> and there is the uh, the Swanage Steam Railway just pulling in. Beautiful sight. Well, looking forward to our trip on that. Well I'll tell you Logan and I have had a whale of a time exploring the castle. We're now going to have a little cup of tea and something to eat at the tea shop before we start heading back to Kingston. Well, we're back onto Corf Common now. I tell you, that Corf Castle. I mean, the castle was something, but you know, the houses there were so pretty. There was uh, just one after the other, so well kept, and of course, it always looked so clean with that um, light Purbeck stone. It really was quite beautiful. Now, although we're on the common, I'm actually going to follow a, what looks like a farm track because there's one thing that I want to look at on our way back to Kingston. Now this very pretty farm is uh, Blashenwell Farm and uh, the present buildings here are 18th century but there was a settlement here much earlier uh, due to a spring that emerges to the south of the buildings. Uh, Blashenwell means spring or stream where cloth is bleached and indeed minerals from the rock uh, dissolve in the water here and they have a bleaching effect on cloth. Isn't it uh, pretty? I'm guessing that uh, the spring must be uh, here where the, uh, the sort of large pond is. Well, this rather magnificent uh, cast iron water wheel was added to the farm in the 19th century. And the wheel is powered by a uh, water held in a man-made mill pond slightly further up the hill. A little uphill bit, but we're on our final leg now. One final push, and then we're back at Kingston. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. What a super walk we've had today. And we thought we'd do the end scene here right at the top of Corfe Castle on a glorious, sunny spring day. Beautiful. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. I think you're ready to go to sleep. Thank you.